Welcome everyone to the OpenDex Connections Summit and to this session on managing ERP-driven digital transformation. My name is Ville Parkinen, I'm from OpenDex and with me is Sue Phillips from Godiva. Welcome Sue, it's so great to have you with us and once again, welcome to everyone joining this session. To get us started, uh, I want to quickly walk you through what we're going to be discussing today. So I'm going to set the scene by going over some perspectives into some of the changes that we're seeing in the world of the ERP at the moment, what role ERP integra integration plays in this, and what kinds of challenges organizations are facing uh, with regards to all of this. And uh, after this quick intro by myself, uh, we'll get into the, our main topic today, which is hearing from Sue how all of this impacts things at Godiva and what observations she has made through her own work there. And uh, I'm definitely excited about what's ahead, so uh, let's get going. Um, the very first observation that I want to share with you is that ERP landscape in organizations is complex. And uh, to explore this a bit further, I'm using some of the key data points that we uncovered in a study that we did with IDG earlier this year. And um, if we look at the stats I have on the slide here, um, where the totals amount to way more than 100%, by the way, um, we can conclude that the uh, ERP landscape in organizations is, in general is quite fragmented. Um, on the left there, uh, we can see that almost 80% of our respondents still had ERP systems hosted in their on-premises data centers, uh, but more than 60% also had public cloud deployments and 45% uh, had private cloud deployments. The situation obviously varies from one organization to the next, uh, but overall, it seems that many organizations have multiple types of deployments uh, that they're using uh, today. And um, on the right, uh, you can see the split of different ERP vendors among our respondents, where the uh, you can see the traditional vendors leading the pack, but we can also see some of the cloud native systems such as NetSuite and Workday well represented uh, in the figures. And um, the choice of system, of course, varies by company size, uh, industry, and also maybe some other factors. And uh, in this particular study that we're talking about today, uh, we covered respondents from organizations with more than 1,000 employees across uh, 19 different industries, uh, with the manufacturing, financial services, and retail being the most represented uh, amongst these organizations. And um, if we then have a look at what the same study tells us about ERP in integration, uh, we can then see that many organizations have very, various kinds of systems uh, that they need to connect. And considering the continued importance of digital transformation, this is of course not, not a surprise since uh, integration is an essential enabler of process automation when data is processed in multiple systems. And uh, here we can see that the most commonly integrated systems include the CRM and HR systems, as well as then external trading partners, including customers and suppliers. However, as you can see, uh, the other systems listed here also scored quite high numbers from the respondents. So lots of connectivity needs there. Um, I also want to point out one of the key findings uh, of our study here, which was that on average, 44% of the transactional data in ERP systems originates in external sources. So meaning systems of your uh, trading partners, suppliers, customers, or, or some other external sources. And this number has also grown over the years as we've seen increasing digitization of the supply chain that has driven closer and more data intensive collaboration between uh, trading partners. And we can see this trend continuing today. Um, we actually did a similar survey uh, to this one back in 2009, believe it or not, where the share of external data was around 33%. So we've seen an increase here. Now, while these are obviously indicative figures only uh, with plenty of room for variation, I would argue that at the very least, organizations should play um, organizations should pay close attention to where their data originates and what impact the large share of externally sourced data has on things like uh, data quality and uh, potential business process disruptions they may be facing. In the study, we also asked respondents if they were experiencing challenges with integration and found that most organizations had challenges in both integration project delivery and ongoing integration operations in the form of, uh, for example, connectivity issues. Now, what I wanna highlight here are the main causes for integration project delays that the respondents reported. Uh, and as we can see, the most common challenge is the lack of available integration expertise, closely followed by competing priorities of, of other projects. And I've also picked, some, picked out some of the uh, individual comments that the respondents made regarding their biggest challenges, where you can see that the lack of expertise can relate to things like the pace of change in integration and ERP technologies, as well as difficulties in recruiting and retaining people uh, with the right skills. 
And uh, the global pandemic naturally has uh, complicated things even further from, from there. And uh, as a key takeaway really from here, uh, we're seeing that the broad range of skills that are needed for ERP integration are often difficult to source and manage, which is perhaps the most important uh, thing that organizations should take into consideration um, when they are developing their integration capabilities further. And finally, we wanted to find out how things will evolve from here. So we asked what kinds of plans organizations have around modernizing their ERP systems and uh, also their integration solutions. And based on the results on the left, uh, it seems that the complexity around ERP deployments is not likely to go away anytime soon as uh, plans to both move an on-premise ERP system to the cloud and update an existing on-premises system were reported by more than 50% of the respondents. And this means that we're likely to see many organizations with a hybrid approach where uh, their ERP deployment model continues to be split between on-premises and the cloud. Um, and with regards to integration, uh, as a result of all of this complexity and change, we can see that 91% of organizations are looking to develop new integration capabilities, which is not exactly a surprise considering that the challenges that were um, reported by, by respondents, some of which I've covered just now. Uh, but now it is time for us to move to the most interesting part of today's session, uh, which is hearing from Sue if and how these observations um, compare with her experience from working with the ERP integration at Godiva. So again, welcome Sue, and thanks for joining the session today. Thank you, Ville. Um, thank, um, really glad to be here to discuss a topic that has become very complicated in the last few years, and especially in the last year and a half. Yeah, sounds like it's a good time to have that conversation. So uh, let's kick off our conversation. And I'm really curious to hear your perspective on some of the research point that I just covered. Uh, so uh, any thoughts on this? Actually, the results of the, the research are not surprising to me. They pretty much are in line with what I'm seeing happening at Godiva and as well as what's happening with a lot of my partners, be it trading partners or just, or business partners. Uh, so not surprising at all. Excellent, and uh, I think you touched upon or almost touched upon a little bit about this, but can you talk, uh, you know, talk us through some of the overall digital transformation plans you have at Godiva? So what are some of the key programs that you have going on at the moment? Um, well, right now, one of the things like a, like many companies is trying to figure out how to get information between ourselves and our partners, but then to be able to get the information to our, um, our coworkers, our associates who are now finding themselves working at home or working part-time at home and um, having visibility to parts of the business that they had um, more manual, uh, so to speak, visibility to before. And now they're not on site, they're not next to their coworker um, and you know, bringing in tools to be able to move data around and integrate to different systems. And even just having a meeting like we are today is new to a lot of people and to a lot of businesses, big and small. All right, so essentially enabling that kind of remote work and keeping keeping the business running um, with, with people being dispersed in, dis dispersed in different locations. Um, uh, I'm curious to hear sort of uh, any kind of uh, specific examples on maybe on a more tactical level. So what would be some of the kind of day-to-day -day priorities that you hear from your stakeholders on the business side, for example? So what are the kinds of key things that uh, people are looking to address? Um, well, um, a lot of things. And when we're talking, you, you showed the slide with people who are looking to upgrade ERP systems and so forth. And one of the challenges I think right now is that things that were being done manually to move data from one system to another, from one platform to another, that a lot of businesses are looking at that and saying, how can I integrate all these different applications that I have that when I had some 
you know, when I had everyone on site and we were talking to each other side by side and, and we could, it was much easier to just say, oh, can you go update this? Well, now we want to be able to do this integrated. We want to automate it. We want to have it happening 24-7, or we only want to have it happening on off hours is, is a real challenge to, to us and to a lot of other businesses from the conversations I've had with partners and, and others in the industry. Yeah, that, that's excellent. And I'm definitely interested to hear a little bit more about those integration requirements and the kind of systems. So obviously we showed some of those systems that companies typically are using. So I want to circle back to that. But but first, uh, I wanted to kind of uh, maybe uh, touch upon a little bit about the topic of ERP. So can you describe your ERP landscape today on a high level and what the kind of strategy you're looking at going forward in terms of your ERP? Well, um our ERPs are, um, we're, we're a mixture of ERPs. Um, it, you know, many companies are looking at the ERP landscape and saying, if I'm international, how do I integrate all of my international businesses? Do I go with ERPs that fit my businesses regionally? Do I go with the, an ERP that can cover all of my businesses and have multiple instances, have one instance, how do, that? that is a decision that every company is trying to make right now because we're all finding that we need to do more with our ERPs and some of them just aren't coming up to what we need today. Um, so that's, that's a big decision, um, really not at liberty to go into any more detail about that, but it's a big decision that has to be made by every company. So you make that decision and then you have to, the implementation of that ERP, when you start looking at how many integration connections, which is, you know, one of the discussion we're having here is that, you know, even if you're integrating internationally, if you're integrating regionally, if you're just a North American based business, you're going to have all kinds of applications that are not going to be in your ERP. You know, traditionally 30, 40 years ago when the ERP landscape was your ERP did everything. Um, today, that's really not the case. We're finding so many e ERPs and so many applications are being built to connect to those ERPs depending on your size of business, depending on your, your channel, your, your area, what your, what your area, you a manufacturer, are you a service company? So, so many different, like your, as you showed, HR, customer um, relations management, shop floor, uh, you know, we have the whole thing going on in so many industries with RFID and how do you, you know, integrate that into your, your ERP. Um, so, so many, many integration points. Um, I will tell you, you know, we, we've, we, we map that out for ourselves in planning our projects. And every time we try to unravel the spaghetti, we just find that the spaghetti becomes even more tangled. Um, and, and it's not unusual because it's also the more you have people remote and you're trying to share data, the more you're going to have people um, extracting data and sending it to their coworker or extracting data for, for this partner to show them their sales or to show, you know, it, it just is, it's incredible the number of things you can come up with that as to why you want to extract data or bring data into a system. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting here. And, and obviously we, we also see a lot of that, that the kind of implications of the fact that we're moving from that what we call the monolithic ERP with modular approach of you know doing pretty much everything to now coming to a world where we are using best of breed cloud applications to meet the specific business needs and kind of need to weave somehow weave that all of that together. All the while the integration requirements are moving like with the let's say the monolithic world. Obviously, we had the uh, 
uh, sort of on-premises system. So that you, you had technology for that, but now we're facing cloud endpoints. And uh, uh, yeah, we definitely see the same uh, same across really a lot of organizations. Um, obviously, we, you talked a lot already about the integration, but do you have any any other thoughts around the ERP integration at Godiva? So any of your uh, kind of priorities uh, that, that you'd like to add here or kind of information that you can share? Uh, essentially, I think that's kind of the limitation that we have. So, um, well, I mean, integration and, and the challenge that you have is um, how, how do you spoke about it in the challenges that others are seeing in your, your research is that having the skill sets, but also being able to do it quickly. And um, sometimes, you know, uh, integration is also a agreement between the two people, the two uh, entities sharing the data as to how they're going to share the data. And that can be as complicated as, as any part of the project of doing an integration. And when you multiply that by all the applications that you've now decided need to be attached to your ERP, it becomes as big of a project as the ERP implementation itself. Yeah, that's um, very interesting to hear. I'm not sure I answered your question there. But. I think uh, I think you did. I think you did. Um, and I actually had a follow up question from there because obviously there there are all these requirements, and uh, you talked about resourcing. And a kind of follow up question that I have to that is how predictable are these um, from your point of view? Like how well do you know in advance, let's say that what kinds of integration projects, uh, you know, the organization is facing within the next six months or the 12 months. So how predictable are these or are they, are there things that come ad hoc your way? Any kind of thoughts on that? Well, so in, in many cases, if we're talking, you know, integration internally, we, we usually, you know, we have a plan. We, we know what internally at Godiva we're pretty much going to be working on. Um, I'm sure I am not alone in this, but in the, the world of EDI, you, your projects are often affected by your outside trading partners. You know, a trading partner who is your customer, who has thousands of customers and wants to make an EDI change at some point, is it doesn't care that you have three or four other projects going on. They have their timeline and and that is that is as challenging to manage as just the number of integrations because um, EDI is an integration. you know it, it's been around for so long, but it really is an integration because you're moving data out of your system to other systems and you're bringing it in from somewhere else. And even though there's a standard around it, we all know if we've worked in it for more than five months that everyone has their own idea of how they want the standard to work. So it's, you know, every new implementation or every new contact that we get is, is a start over. Where, what do they want? What do they require? What do they need? Same thing happens with any integration. It's like, if I need to get information from my where my third party warehouse, what do I need to send them? What do they need to send me so that I can finalize what they've done, the action that they've done for me? So it's it is much more uh, complicated than um, than it initially looks. By oh well, we got a CSV file here. Well. Getting to that CSV file requires a lot of negotiation behind that CSV file. Definitely, yeah, and, and that's obviously a very important thing is to reconciliate the how 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 what is the way that we see the world. So recon reconciliating essentially the data models used by both partner and and mapping those together to enable that that automated definitely an an, an important topic there. Um, I do want to ask about uh, one of the stats that I, that I showed earlier, which was well in in this particular study it was forty four percent of data is, is uh, or transactional data in the ERP comes from outside of the organization. 
And obviously that raises a question around data quality. And I really wanted to hear your thoughts around this. So um, what, what do you, how do you see the kind of a challenge with data quality when data is essentially it originates from a system that is not in your direct control? So um, any, any thoughts you can share on this topic? Um, data quality, I mean, we could have a whole seminar on data quality. We could have a whole session on that. And it it is, um, I can, can tell you that just in the last two days, I've had issues with data quality that have had to be handled either by someone on my end who received bad data or from the, the partner who says, now wait, I have to fix this before I send it to you. Um, yeah, so it it's just part of it. Um, and how do I, the more human intervention you have in your integrations and in creating the files that you're going to trade will lead to a degradation in your data quality. So the more machine to machine data you can have, and if your data on your machines is good, um, then, you know, the, the better your, your data will be and the smoother your processes will, will flow. Yeah. The less exceptions you have to deal with, you know, so, um, but even machine, it, you know, if your master data isn't good and your transactional data has issues, your machine to machine isn't going to be good either. Definitely. And I think that that is a goal for a lot of organizations. It's like we only want to touch it if there's an exception, like a legitimate exception. We don't want to touch it. Otherwise, we'll let the automation run there. Um, what's your take on the opportunity that organizations have? Because obviously we have this, let's say, the utopia or the ideal world of where all the data is perfect versus where we are now. And then there are some issues with data. So what, what do you think in terms of like addressing those issues? What, what's the potential for a business getting benefit from addressing data quality? Um, is, there an, is there an opportunity? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the, there is most definitely opportunities to, um, to address the data quality issue. The, the commitment that has to be made by businesses to do that is the time to get it clean and then the commitment to keep it clean. Um, just getting to that point and then not continuing with the processes at, that got you there is going, you're going to just end up right back where you were. Um, so that is that is a commitment. And you know, when you look at it the first time and says, well, we've got to clean up our vendor master file, or we've got to clean up our um, customer files. We see that, you know, that starts out as a a sort of small project, but as you move through it and you see in an ERP system how much that data affects other things downstream in your ERP, it becomes a big commitment. And it's it's something that if you're gonna start a data cleansing, you need to be in it for the long haul. Yeah, that's definitely a very important point to make that it's not a one-off effort, like let's get our data clean, but there needs to be that ongoing process or the ongoing commit commitment to keeping it clean down the road because obviously you're going to end up in the same situation after a while if you if you only do it like so yeah that's that's a very important point to raise there um uh, we're approaching the end here and i have a couple of questions that i want to ask you still and uh the first one is around the integration efforts at uh, godiva so uh, what's in your future anything you can share of like what are the kinds of things that you are looking to develop going forward like things that you are are at the top of mind for you right now um well, we have a lot of integration sites and we, like everyone else, are looking at our ERP system and then looking at it, updating it, which when doing that will require new integrations or will require redoing integrations. And the question is then is if we have, if you have integrations in place 
and you're changing one end of it. If if a partner changes their ERP or their WM system, and you now have to receive data from them, how you know it's a project then to go and either receive new structures files from them or for them to continue sending you what they've always been sending you. So that that's sort of the biggest challenge right now is evaluating all the integrations that we currently have and how do we move forward with them? Do we redo them? Do we keep them the same? Um, that's, that's a big challenge because um, we have a lot of integrations and a lot of businesses out there who are using manufacturers who are using 3PLs, who are communicating with um, their supply vendors, who are communicating with their customers. You have these, these integrations already in place. And when you change one major end of that integration, it's it the big decision is which integrations do I change? Which do I keep the same and to move forward effectively? Yeah, that's uh, definitely very interesting. And this is obviously uh, it's surprising how hard it is to get a get an understanding of your current landscape because obviously with companies that have been in existence for a long time, I mean EDI has been around for a long time. And when, when it comes to those external integrations and you've started off you know, a decade ago or two decades ago, or three decades ago, or even further. And you may have still some of that stuff running around, running, running in, uh, in, in your kind of uh, setups or current setups. So there's active integrations, but you don't necessarily have documentation. And then if you go like, what version of which standard is this on? What are the data elements that we use? So it's, it's definitely something that we work with organizations quite a lot to get that understanding, first of all, so that we can decide what to do. That that's a, uh, that's a very important step that, uh, I think particularly now when we are moving into, I think a lot of organizations are looking into that ERP, like what's next for our ERP? So do we need to migrate to a new system, uh, whatever system you're on? I mean, that's going to be a question that a lot of organizations are facing. And this actually leads me to my final question to you, which is, uh, since a lot of people in the audience are probably looking at or will be looking at an ERP migration in the future, what would be your advice to them or guidance that you can give based on your own kind of perspective on things? So any, any thoughts that you'd like to share? Well, there, there's a whole lot of thoughts I have on that, but um, basically as far as integrations are concerned is um, dig deep into what is happening in your ERP because you will come across integrations that are there and have been there for a long time and are just are happening. And because they happen and they're stable, they tend to get forgotten. And then when you get to the point where, well, we think we have all of our projects and we have the list lined up and you get into a meeting to review everything and someone will mention one that you missed. <laughs> so be prepared for that um, because they're, if you've been integrating between platforms and between your, all of your business partners um, on the supply side and the demand side, you're going to find that you, you have more integrations than you ever thought you had. Yeah, definitely great advice there. And I think that, that I'm afraid that that's all, all the time we have for today. Uh, so Sue, thank you so much for joining us and, and sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, I've, I've definitely learned a lot myself and got a lot of good ideas, and I'm sure many viewers will feel the same way. Um, and uh, I think at this point, it is now time for us to wrap up. So uh, with that, uh, thank you all for joining the session today. Hope that it has been valuable and uh, bye for now.